<laughs> All right, we need to come up with a good name for Donnie's shop here. I think we should call Donnie's shop Donnie's Hard Bodies. <laughs> and your homeowner's insurance does not cover it while it's in the garage. That's a wow. huge misconception in really? our space. People sell trucks that say no visible rust. It's because they've done a really good job of hiding it. I mean, I bought mine for seven and I don't know how much I've put into it. You know, I'd think it's twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars. <laughs> We're gonna get all kinds of offers now. Yeah. <laughs> it's sold. I'll give you Look, twenty. <laughs> someone just bought it. <laughs> yeah, so we're uh, in the shop right now. We're actually getting ready to undercoat three Broncos. Uh, that one being probably yes, the third yes. one that we'll do. So yep. you can maybe get it painted. Yep. And uh, you're about done with the chassis, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, still have to uh, land on engine things, um, but we're talking about that now. So, yeah. Yeah, it's ideal if you can get the bottom of your truck undercoated before you set it on your nice chassis that you've completely built. And in your YouTube video, you're talking about building a Bronco, you know, with a new body from start to finish. And Yeah, yeah. And, you know, one of the things that, uh, when you're doing a restoration is before you paint it, you want to be able to hook everything up, know where everything is going to go, you know, like, Oh, I need to drill an extra hole here for this wire, or this doesn't quite fit, you know, because you're throwing a bunch of aftermarket parts on it. And, uh, and you don't want to do that after you've painted. And so even with the undercoating, that's one of the things that you want to do, you know, before you take it to paint, um, get that undercoating done, drop it onto the frame, get everything fit, get everything, you know, so it works. And then you have to take it all back apart again, but at least then you know that it's not gonna, uh, you know, bite you when you're trying to put in your amp research steps and you're scratching your paint and, you know, doing all this, like when you're putting everything back together. So, yeah. Yeah. It's ideal if you can, uh, set the body on there one time. Yeah. And not have to fool with it. But, you know, a stock Bronco bushing is an inch. Unless it's old, it's like a quarter (laughs) of an inch. It's like the disc in your back. It just keeps squishing (laughs) down. They get harder to remove. So there's really no room in between the frame and the bottom of the truck because the the floor pans follow the the actual frame itself, frame rails. So um, the higher you can get it up, the better. I've seen people lift the trucks up, you know, 8, 10 inches and undercoat them without actually removing it. And then they'll jack them back down. And that's one way to get to it. But, you know, certain things come through the floor pan. If you can just do that one time, it's really neat and clean. So a lot of people are undercoating the the Broncos uh, with the same color that they're using the bed liner inside the truck. So sometimes you just do that whole process at once. And then your painter only has to paint the engine bay and the outside of the truck. Yeah. So that's kind of nice. Yeah, and if you guys don't know, Donnie's talking from his experience because he is uh he's got a shop, you can see it there behind him peeking through the door. Um Nashville Bronco Bodies Builders. Builders. <laughs> <laughs> I get yours wrong, you get mine wrong. <laughs> All right, we need to come up with a good name for Donnie's shop here because uh we're here at the Nashville Bronco Builders Dreamweaver Fab, but you can't find Nashville Bronco Builders online. You have to go to Dreamweaver Fab. I vote. Uh, let's throw this out here. I think we should call Donnie's shop Donnie's Hard Bodies. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie's Bodies. Donnie's Bodies. <laughs> we yeah. got, we're going down to Donnie's Bodies. It just sounds wrong. This is this is a family show, guys. Come on. Clean it up. <laughs> but seriously, uh, comment down below. What are we going to call Donnie's shop? The Nashville hard bodies? <laughs> Nashville, Do- Donnie's Nashville bodies? <laughs> yeah, who knows? Donnie's, <laughs> Donnie's Bronco bodies. At least they know we're in Nashville. It's that's like, right. That's right. You get here, you can find it. Yeah. Yeah. But not on the internet. Yeah. Right. It's really tough. We haven't figured that out yet. It's Dreamweaver. Let me, I'm going to look it up real quick. I think it's Dreamweaver Fab. Yeah. We don't even know. Donnie's website, Dreamweaver Fab, Dreamweaverfab.com. That's it. Yeah. So go there. Everyone bomb, bomb Donnie's website <laughs> with new names and yeah. logos. And <laughs> no, comment below. Seriously, if you're watching YouTube, oh, that's a nice Bronco. 
If you're watching this on YouTube, give us a little comment. What do you think Donnie's shop name should be? So that we can be like, hey, what's up, guys? We're here in the dinosaur village. Or we're here in, <laughs> um, you know, the, the, dream, the dream house. The, uh, I'm just making up things off the top of my head. I need to stop because it's going to go downhill very quickly. We're going to add um, whole videos sort of a build, more like time lapse. We're not going to make yeah. fancy videos, but where you can see a truck go from start to finish with just a time lapse, yeah. uh, which would kind of be fun. So we'll be That'd taking be cool. it from all the parts and pieces, yeah. putting it together. And then we're doing three right now to completion. So we're going to take those all the way to the end, which will be kind of fun to watch. Like a quick eight minute, just watch your whole truck get built. Yeah. That'd be super cool. Yeah, I would love, if I were building a Bronco, I would love to be able to see that and see the process. Cause you'd show everyone like, oh yeah, there's video of my Bronco being built. It'd be super cool. Uh, now Donnie talking about in the news, uh, a little bit, I guess this isn't really in the news, but bring a trailer is kind of news. What was going on with uh, bring a trailer this week or not week, but recently? Yeah, actually just last month. I, you know, I always follow stuff and everybody sends me things and a strop Bronco came up for sale and a lot of people don't know what that is, but it went for $195,000 and I've always liked it because it's got that Baja look that I like. Well, there's a reason for it. It's a Baja package Bronco yeah. that you could buy through a dealer. Yeah. That, I, I always thought that was crazy. Like here you have, was it uh, Billy Strop? Bill Strop? Bill Strop. Bill Strop. And who did he race with? Um, Do you remember? I, we actually raced with um, Duff, and he raced against Parnelli oh, Jones, against, and he yeah. raced in those, all those guys. And, and in 1969, his Broncos that he prepped for racing called Strop Broncos and his Strop Racing yeah. company, they um, won the 69 1,000-mile Baja and so cool. the 500-mile race. Wow. So he kind of got real popular real fast. But, yeah, um, yeah so... Ford did with Bill Strop what they did with Carroll Shelby, you know, which was a few years earlier in the mid sixties, but I think it was 1971 is when they introduced to the dealer network, the Strop Baja Bronco. And we were talking about the yeah. only designation on the truck besides the paint job was, uh, there was the badge on the side that was was unique and then the the tire carrier vinyl <laughs> yeah. all right that's i mean i when, know that there's more like the the true strop uh enthusiast would be able to tell you all of the the like actual where it says strop on the bronco yeah. but the, those are the obvious ones but yeah besides the three colors yes the red well, white blue paint job and in 1971 that was the only way and i think even 72 that you could get an automatic transmission with the 351 um you know it was like if you wanted that package that was the only way to do it um but i just think it's so cool like how, uh, you know like this is a, a racing car, basically. It's it, it was the first Raptor, you know, like yeah, yeah. there's a racing truck, you know, Baja racing truck, and you could buy one from the dealer, and it had the Cactus Smasher up front. It had the roll bar single hoop, I think. Like, I don't think it was a full cage. I think it was just the single hoop. Um, and it had a lift and different suspension and the automatic transmission and, uh, and the 351. So yeah, it's such a cool, I don't know. I, I always think they're super cool. How many of them were made? Uh, 500 between 71 and 75. I think wow. the first year they made a hundred, um, then 80 and then uh, maybe 120. And then the last two years, 74 and 75, they only made 30 each year. And that one that went for sale was, I think a 1974. So it was one of 30 that year. Wow. And it was a beautiful restoration, but they actually, uh, the Strop shop cut the quarter panels and put the fiberglass flares on them. Huh. He was like the first one to do that Yeah, for the clearance. Wow. That's so cool. Yeah. I, I've always, I've always thought those trucks were really cool. There's usually two or three of them at, at a Bronco super celebration in, in Tennessee. And, um, you, you know, it's, it's always cool to see them and, um, talk to them. There's a guy up in, uh, Oh, Michigan, I think, who has the Bronco Ranch. Um, 
he had he had a couple and i know um one of my buddies jim shrum out in oregon he um he always talks about them and and i forget if he actually had one or want just wanted them you know but they're those are the rare you know when people ask about what's the rare bronco like that's a that's a pretty rare one to find an original strop well they discontinued the half cab in 72 okay um are there any two door like i mean two door uh half cab strops i wonder oh uh, i yeah i don't think that'd be so. kind of cool to do maybe yeah. i'll do one of my trucks that way and call it the cactus smasher <sighs> cactus smasher is such a great name <laughs> yeah i know it's like i want one yeah yeah just that little, and it's just the it's kind of the bull right bull bar in the front but it's still a yeah. great name which is funny because the new bronco has that bar kind of thing we called it the bo bar because it would block r-o-n-c on the, on the bronco so you just had the bo the, the bar the yeah. b the bar and the o yeah b bar o b o bar so yeah it, it, it's it's interesting you know just i don't know i think about that like how much is uh, you know that one went for 195 how much is are these broncos worth you know these days like you, you people watching listening you know how much is your bronco worth yeah yeah and and what do you have it insured for that you know that can really be the question on the wrong day yeah you know it's like did you know you had fifty thousand in your truck or more and you still had it insured for 15 you're kind of hosed yeah so totally yeah i mean i bought mine for seven and how i don't know how much i've put into it you know it's it still has holes of rust (laughs) in it but it's like could be i would you know i'd think it's 20 30 40 thousand dollar <laughs> we're gonna get all kinds of offers now. yeah <laughs> it's sold i'll give you Look, 20 <laughs> someone just bought it <laughs> yeah 45 but yeah i mean it's yeah i i i wonder what my bronco is insured for right now yeah yeah uh, i'd like to give adam boca a call at the insurance company that i use ncm yeah. insurance and uh just See, you know, I have vehicles insured with them, but what do they do about that? Like, there's all these questions. That I don't even know what I have all on my policy, so maybe we can give them a buzz. Yeah, totally. Special guest call, Mr. Adam. Uh, last week, we had Jimmy Golden. So this week, it's only fitting to have an insurance professional. <laughs> Instead of us answering yeah. questions. <laughs> all right, well, let's do it. Hey, Adam, how's it going? Hey, Donnie, I'm great. How are you? Good, good. You've got Donnie and John here on the phone with you. How's it going, Adam? Hey, guys. I'm awesome. This is, uh, good Good to talk with you guys. Yeah, we had a, a couple questions about insurance. We were just telling a story um, about you know the values of Broncos and how one of them just went for $195,000. Um, but first, uh, do you mind telling us a little bit about your company? Sure. So uh, first, thank you for the opportunity and thanks for the, uh, the, the phone call. We... Uh, we are a collector vehicle insurance agency. We, we focus on insuring only the toys. <laughs> so whether it's a, a, a Corvette or a 57 Chevy or, you know, that Bronco that's uh, sitting in the garage. So those are the vehicles that we focus um, with, with our insurance agency. And NCM insurance, they got their um, start how? Yeah, so... I was fortunate to be able to start the agency for us back in April of 2009. Uh, and it was a kind of a pipe dream um, from our former executive director. Uh, and, and I should back up and say NCM stands for National Corvette Museum. So we're, we're owned, operated, and we have a space inside the, the National Corvette Museum. Oh, nice. So going back to that story, yeah, it's a, it's an amazing um, agency and just with a great, uh, a great customer base. But we don't insure just Corvette. <laughs> uh, we, we do any, any type of collector vehicle. And, uh, you know, we, it started off essentially just as a pipe dream. And uh, instead of referring customers to other agencies, you know, we said, how about we just start our own? And, uh, and so that's what we did. That's awesome. I like that you said we insure all your toys because <laughs> that's yeah. totally what it is. Yeah, they've got uh, four, Absolutely. four of my cars and a motorcycle, which is how I know Adam. Yeah. 
And uh, anything else I come up with, they manage to figure out how to insure it. Nice. nice. So but some of the questions that we have is, um, you know, talk about like the value. Like I have to tell you how much something is worth and then uh, the process that you and I went through to get that, those insurance policies. Yeah. So one of the major benefits of collector vehicle insurance is what's called agreed value. So you know your car better than, than we do. Um, you, you put blood, sweat, tears into that car, and uh, you've seen it at its worst and then at its best. And so you know what that car is all about and what that car is worth. Um, and we're going to ask you, what is, what is the value of your vehicle when we're quoting it? And if you come back to me and say, you know what, my, uh, my 67 Bronco is worth, you know, $160,000, um, then we're probably going to say, okay, give me a little sub- substantiation. Help us <laughs> Why? You know, get to that value. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, if, if you just bought the car, um, I believe there was a recent sale, right? Of, you know, of a 74, uh, was it a Baja special that went for 195,000 yeah. on bring a trailer? Yeah. yeah. If you have that vehicle that you just bought and it just sold for that amount, then, I mean, that's what we're going to insure it for. Yeah. Now, and that's a promise that we would come to you and say, okay, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get the 195,000 uh, or 50,000, whatever the number is. Um, and that's a, a, a contract value. What would you say? Like, what's, what's the difference between this and just insuring your, you know, 2010 uh ford f-150 you know like what 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 is the what are the differences that people get with you guys absolutely so first uh that agreed value protection is 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 probably the highest um you know reason for for going with collector vehicle insurance it's that promise of value but even if you just have an incident or just a fender bender uh, then you're going to be working with dedicated claims, uh, a dedicated claims adjuster that only works on collector vehicles. Uh, so they're not working on, they, they don't, they don't know that Ford F-150 um, and what it takes to repair it. Now they may, know, they may know the 1972 Ford F-100 or, yeah. or uh, whatever it is, but, but they, they don't know modern vehicles. They only focus on the toys. So that experience for you is going to be much better. Um, plus, we'll, we'll tell you to take it to any shop of your choice uh, for for repairs. Hmm. You know the shops in your area better than we do. Yeah. And uh, and and even if you're like Donnie, where you work on your own stuff, uh, we would pay you to fix your own vehicle. Really? Absolutely. Wow. wow. Gotcha. So if I, I always like to ask people. Um, how many Broncos do you have? Cause they never say just one. Yeah. <laughs> like I think I've heard the last three people I've asked had 10. So oh now I do know that yeah. nine out of the 10 probably aren't running. I mean, <laughs> at this point, you know, that could just be a chassis with a rusted out body on it. Is that something they can insure? Absolutely. Um, and you bring up a great point. Um, many car people have many toys Yeah, and, Absolutely, we can insure from from projects, um, you know, vehicles under restoration, all the way to that that beautiful um, as it came off the showroom, or even a resto mod, uh, you know, type vehicle. So ultimately, that vehicle is worth something, and your homeowner's insurance does not cover it while mm. it's in the garage. That's a wow. huge misconception really? in our space. Really? Absolutely, Man. so you want to. You want to make sure you have some sort of coverage on it to, to help. And, you know, what if there's a tornado or a fire? Uh, you, you should get a little bit of uh, you know money out of that if 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 it's damaged. I had a uh, friend that had two vintage cars stored in a detached garage, and mm-hmm. they weren't covered. But turns oh. out he found out it wasn't covered even if it had been in his home garage. Wow! Yeah, shocker. Great. Yeah, that's like ten years worth of work Absolutely. too. That's almost harder. I mean, that's harder to replace than than the value of the car. But he was out all of it. So, oh, man. yeah. Oh, that's awful. It is. And you hate you hate to hear those stories. Yeah. So, what does someone have to send in uh, to insure a policy? 
Uh, I don't remember what all we had to do, but I do remember it was pretty easy. Yeah, it's uh, we try to make it as simple as, as, as we can, and the process is always being refined. Uh, most of our customers start at our website, uh, which is ncminsurance.com. When you click on Get a Quote, it just submits the information that we have to get from you in order to, to put a quote together. We then send you a checklist, and that checklist talks about uh, we need names, dates of birth, and driver's license numbers of anybody that lives in the house, um, regardless if they drive the, the vehicles. Uh, we need VIN number, what the odometer shows, because we are a mileage-based uh, collector vehicle insurance. We have three options, 1,000, 3,000, or 6,000 miles, and then any unused miles roll over year to year. Um, so we get the, the mileage to get a starting point. And then, um, and then we just need what's called the declarations of coverage pages for your daily use vehicles. And we actually make that process pretty simple. If you have recently gone through it with us, we send you an email. You can quickly download it, and it imports it right to, right to our system. That's awesome. Try so, to make it painless. So uh, I have a brand new Bronco, and uh, we were talking about this the other day. But just for the audience, um, if you have a brand new vehicle like my 2022 Bronco has another $25,000 worth of parts added to it. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, let's say someone buys that for eighty or $90,000. Um, can they get insurance for that? As long as it's not the daily use vehicle. If it's if it sits in the garage with your vintage Bronco and it's, uh, you know, they're bookends, then absolutely uh, we, we could figure out you know, coverage for it. Our carrier likes to, to not do more than 3,000 miles on the newer Broncos or the newer uh, collector vehicles. Uh, and then, of course, there's no coverage when it's off-road. So if it's being used for off-road, you're not going to find an insurance company that's going to cover it. Didn't, didn't um, you refer to that absolutely. as like a, a pleasure vehicle? <laughs> yeah, it would have to be your pleasure use vehicle, just the vehicle that you use as your toy. Gotcha. Um, but you'd have to have another vehicle that you drive um, to the grocery store, to the gym, or whatever it may be. And when you say you're saying three thousand, three thousand miles a year is what you're saying. That is correct. So yeah. roughly two hundred fifty miles a month. Gotcha, gotcha. And you said there's three different brackets: three thousand, six thousand. That's what? a one, three, and six. One, three, and six. Gotcha. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah. So, you know, everyone always is so worried about, well, what happens when you get in an accident? You know, like, um, we have a guy here in town that just got in an accident driving to one of our meetups. Um, and you know, what, what, what is it that they would expect, um, if they got in an accident and were insured with you guys? Absolutely. So uh, obviously, this, this program is very much niche, niche-based. Uh, and, and so the experience that our customers would get, um, first, they, they would you know call a file a claim with, with the carrier itself, which is American Modern Insurance Group. And um, they would work with a one claims adjuster. Mm-hmm. Um, I will tell you from experience, I have one of the big box companies on my daily use vehicle. I had a fender bender, and I went through seven or eight claims adjusters wow. um, that I had to re-explain the entire process to. Yep. That doesn't, that, that just doesn't fly for our program. So you get one claims adjuster who's going to work the process with you uh, from beginning to end. And, um, and then again, you take it to any shop, your choice. Now, if you have that vintage Bronco that has, n- has never been hit and, you know, the body's been pristine shape. If, as long as we can find, uh, NOS or um, original parts, then that's what we're going to put back on it. Yeah. Um, if it's been if it's been you know flared or whatever, we're going to you know make it the way it was before the loss. Gotcha. I have uh, I have something I wanted to tell you, Adam. I was talking to a buddy of mine, Steve, just a few weeks ago, and he has a '62 Corvette, and they were displaying at some event in Asheville, and they just decided to drive up the mountain and back down before they put it on the trailer and they got to the top of the mountain, it's getting dark and the car breaks down, no electrical, no lights. Oh, no. And, uh, oh, he's, man. he goes, 
and then he told me, he goes, uh, my insurance company had a wrecker there within 45 minutes. And, uh, and then he was telling me it was NCM. He goes, do you know Adam Boca? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I actually do know Adam. <laughs> it was just the <laughs> irony of the whole thing. It's like small world, but, uh, do, do I have that on my policies? You absolutely, that's a, that's hilarious. Yeah. Very, very much a small, small world, but yes, uh, you absolutely do have the nationwide roadside assistance, um, it's included on, on many of our policies. It's uh, and it's up to two hundred dollars worth of guaranteed flatbed towing and lockout assistance, fuel delivery. Wow! Um, so it's, it's the full gamut of roadside assistance. That's awesome. Well, Adam, thanks for spending some time with us today. And uh, how can people find uh, NCM again? Well, well, first, thank you guys so much for the call and uh, and allowing me to talk to your listeners but you can visit our website at ncminsurance.com click on get a quote or give one of our agents a call at 877-678-7626 cool thanks adam you have a great day thank you too well moving on let's talk a little diy or pay since we know what our insurance we know we're gonna have good insurance on our bronco are we gonna fix it are we gonna pay for pay someone to fix it but you know looking at uh you know we've talked about a lot of stuff and today we just wanted to briefly start the conversation um which is kind of in your wheelhouse of rust uh you know like all of the Every Bronco that you see out there today, if it has not been fully restored, it has rust. The bad news of your Bronco. Yeah, exactly. And so I kind of broke down, I I was thinking about this and I kind of broke down, um, you know, I want to talk about where to look for rust, how to inspect it. Can you treat it and how to replace it? Now we're not going to go deep here. This isn't like, you know, uh, in depth, hour long conversation, but, um, you know, I feel like, uh, the listener has kind of the expert with you, um, you know, talking about just, you know, we're here at, uh, Donna, Donnie's Bronco body shop in Nashville. <laughs> Donna, <I like> Donna. <laughs> um, and so talking about, um, where, where are we looking for rust, uh, right off the bat when you get your Bronco or you're looking at buying one, where are you looking for rust? Yeah. You know, if there's carpet, take the seats and the carpet out yeah and under that you're probably going to find plating and if there's plating then you go underneath the truck because that's probably all welded and glued and screwed in and then you can inspect it from the bottom but you know there's this people sell trucks that say no visible rust it's because they've done a really good job of hiding it right. so to be honest if if you want a truck with a rust-free floor pan it should have the bead rolls top and bottom yeah you know, all the seams are, are their butt fit they're perfect fits and if you don't see that or you see patch panels you you know that they're covering rust and it, it's really rare to find a bronco that doesn't have r- rusted out floor pans yeah i think the other area to look at is um i think you called it the owl's nest you know right there inside the engine bay there's just so many ford did such a weird configuration with the firewall and the cowl there and then the, where you know where the fenders come in and um i always see rust in the engine bay you know if you're just to give you a visual like if you're looking at the front of your bronco under the engine bay on the sides kind of tucked uh next to the firewall on the what would that be the inner fender inner fenders yeah yeah, yeah. and that that's for some reason those were two pieces of metal that got, um, were they just welded together the, at, from the factory? Uh, yeah. What happens is water goes down in between those two pieces of metal. Yeah. So there's about a, a nine inch, uh, maybe an eight inch square and there's 24 spot welds in that. Oh, and wow. once it starts rusting, you know, and it's what holds the front end together other than the fender bolts. So yeah, you, you really need to, they all rust there in everyone's in owl's nest because the hole sometime is big enough for an owl to pass yeah. through. And it <laughs> looks like a, it usually a bird squirrels, all kinds of creatures like to make nests there. So that's why people call it nest yeah. area. And the last place, obviously the rockers looking at, at the rockers there. If you check the floorboards, you're going to see the rockers. Rockers are usually visible. Um, if you're just looking at the side of the truck, but yeah, 
Mm-hmm. And, and rockers can be pretty easily replaced yeah. um, if you have metal to weld to. So, yeah, rockers are sometimes there'll be diamond plate panels <laughs> over that. They're oh, usually, yeah. They're usually there. We pulled one off recently, and there was a giant opening from where they had side exhaust going out, and oh then the gosh. rest of them were just dented all the way down. It's yeah. like, yeah, they were. But when they were on, you couldn't tell. Yep. Oh, yeah. Diamond plating. That guy had a mustache. Um, <laughs> so inspecting rust. Um What's kind of your, uh, when you're looking at rust, what, what are you looking for? Like, what's the point of no return, basically? Yeah, the, the, um, the door hinges, you know, if you're going to have gaps in doors that are going to stay shut, that door hinge, which is vertical, it's called an A-pillar um, or hinge post. Um, it's made of like five or six pieces of metal all put together together and um, spot welded together and if your doors are sagging and you lift up on them and you hear crunching sound <laughs> that's probably rust yeah. so but uh, those are or pretty hard to game. replace once if those are really gone and your rockers are gone you can buy a f- floor pan assembly which is the middle of the truck and you can buy a pillars but once you start doing that much work you know you're you're already at five six thousand dollars in parts Jeez. and labor Uh, because nobody wants to do that job you're basically taking the middle of the truck out and putting it back in which you know um at that point it's major surgery so you might as well buy a new body and i I mean i say that because i make bodies but (laughs) if in the end you know if you're just going to hide some of the rust 20 30 percent and you deal with 80 percent of it you still have a truck that has 20 or 30 percent rust in it and you've spent $8,000 $8,000 less than a new body would have cost you. Yeah. So, but I do like patina paint jobs. I tell everyone, uh, probably at least two people a week that come in and, and I say, you know, why don't you get your brakes fixed and your engine fixed and just enjoy it for as long as yeah. you can, because, um, you know, a body's in a paint job and all that labor, you're probably at 30 grand. Yeah. Yeah. I know on my truck, uh, <clears throat> the, uh, floor pans are, I replaced them. I mean, I didn't do a very good job. <laughs> um, what would you, what, you know, how many, how many uh, wrenches would you give a floor pan replacement? Not the whole, not the 13 piece or like that whole like oh, big yeah. thing, but like, let's just say two drop in like passenger and driver dropping in floor, new floor pans. What would you say? Well, I like drop in floor pans. They're actually, you know, pretty easy to do. Um, you know, if, if you can get really good metal to attach it to you can have them welded in and you know they overlap by about an inch and a half all the way around so it kind of looks like dropping pie crust into a pie plate it fits right in there only square yeah and um you know you can attach it then great but what typically happens is it's rust that you're trying to attach it to a lot of people will set those in there and try and weld the top seam which works too or use a um a panel bond yeah. and seam sealer. And, you know, that works too, because, you know, if you don't plan on selling your Bronco and you want to save up for that body one day, I absolutely would do drop in pans. Yeah. Yeah. But not the kind of thing to do a full fix, but a full, how many wrenches in it? Uh, if you have to weld it, you know, that's a whole nother thing. Yeah. Um, so, but if you can find someone to weld it, but cutting the metal out and dropping the pan in and you buy some, a hammer and dolly and you just sort of bend the metal so it fits perfectly all the way around three four wrenches i would say yeah i would say i'd say four wrenches um and i did this uh and i have a little time lapse video of me actually doing it that's all i did was just did a time lapse because i wasn't doing my youtube channel back then but uh but it was one of the first things that I did. And I love what you say of fitting the the pan because I didn't. I didn't know that that's how you did it. I didn't know that you wanted the pan to just fit in there nicely. So I like put in sheet metal screws all through it, you know, to like hold it down. And then I'd take one sheet metal screw and weld the hole, you know, from the sheet metal screw. And it was terrible. Like, they didn't hold, you know, it, yeah. like, cause I didn't fit the pan in, you know? So it was like some parts, there's a one inch gap, you know, that I'm trying to get a sheet metal scooter to hold together, you know, and just, it was a mess, but that's what I did. I did drop in pans. 
Um, and I would say, yeah, I'd say four wrenches, um, for that job. Uh, and, uh, but it, it can be done and it's a good fix, but I think I agree with you. Like if you're going to do it right, it's going to be a complete, uh, pretty close to complete body, um, that you're working with. You know, if, if I bought a Bronco today and it was running and driving, it needed a body. I would probably drop in pans and drive it for a couple of years yeah. just because I don't want to wait for a body and a paint job. And then once it's painted, you don't really want to drive it anywhere, but I can wheel it. If I got drop in pans and I didn't do the body, I can have all kinds of fun with that. Yeah, totally. And uh, it's not losing any value that way. Yep. So totally. drop in pans are, you know, can be a hundred dollars. Yeah. You know, it have to be super expensive. Well, there you go. Uh, Just scratching the surface on rust and floor pans and all that kind of stuff. I mean, there's so much. We could talk about that for four and a half hours, but we're not going to today. Uh, We are going to move on. Talking about parts. Everybody, all all of our our Bronco fans love Bronco parts. We're just coming out of a wonderful Black Friday season. What uh, what parts are you looking at? for the Bronco. Well, I'm going to, I want to spin off on, uh, the drop in pans. Dennis oh, yeah. Carpenter makes, hey, uh, uh, patch panels, but not drop in pans, but then Tom's makes the drop in pans and, and you can, it's nice. funny. Carpenter's more of a, a restoration, like mm-hmm. make factory perfect replacements. Whereas, you know, there's a huge, um, market for the drop in pans. So, yeah. but uh, I actually picked a tool for this week and my tool is a power probe. Yeah. Um, I actually have a power probe. I think it's a three now and uh, it's really cool. We actually used one on the trail ride with your <laughs> truck. Uh, we had an electrical issue and somebody who was it on the ride that had one in their truck, Mike trail, trail boss, Mike trail boss, Mike had one in his <laughs> truck and we were able to power, put power to the fuel pump yep. and determine, and you know, start at the fuel pump, All right, the pump's not bad. And then we'd move up the wiring of your truck from the back to the front while we're in the middle of a creek. Yeah. <laughs> Technically it was a road. We were just at right. a crossing in um, a, a 15 minutes. We had your truck going. Yeah. Maybe perfect. less. Yeah. Th- those things are awesome. Yeah. And yeah. eventually determined that it was the relay. They, the power probe, not only, um, you know, tells you if there's electricity or there or not, but you can power it to see if you're sending power and the wiring's good from wherever you're yeah. putting the probe onto that. So I love that tool. Super handy. Yeah. That, that should be in every Bronco owner's tool bag for sure. Well, mine today, uh, is Eastwood 2k spray paint. Um, I recently, uh, rebuilt my or d- bought a new, uh, old, geez, bought an old rear seat and refurbished it. Um, and so I sprayed it down with some Eastwood 2k spray paint. Uh, and that stuff's great. I did a primer coat and then a, uh, like a top coat, hot rod black or something. Um, and uh, great, great product, easy to use a little bit expensive. I, I don't love the price tag on it, but um, it looks great. I used it too on, uh, on my restoration on like my radius arms, my radius arm caps, my, uh, couple parts that, you know, just hunk of metal and just sprayed it down. So, well, to wrap up this episode, um, let's pick up where we left off with Jimmy Golden talking about the 1968 Ford Bronco. In 1968, there were 16,629 produced. Uh, it's the first year for the 302, which is kind of a big deal. Nice. Although it went from 200 horse to 205 horse. <laughs> really? Yeah, it only went up five horsepower. <laughs> From 289, though, right? Yeah, from the oh, okay. 289. Okay. Yeah. But, I thought you went from the inline six. Oh, no. The inline six was, uh, I think, 170 cubic okay. inches. I don't yeah. know how many horsepower it made. Yeah. Uh, Probably half that, maybe right. 125, something like that. That's about what my Bronco makes now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 302 in, in 68. Yeah, it's still a three-speed manual. It still had a Dana, Dana 30 under it, nine-inch Ford rear. Um there were different gearing ratios that you could get. There were like four different ratios that you get depending on how you use your truck. Oh. Or he's talking about that, but you could order it for with highway gears or all the way up to, uh, I don't know if they're 410 or 456, how high they went. Wow. Um, but yeah, just if it was a farm truck 
or if you're yeah, get them low climbing maybe. hills, yeah, or pulling heavy loads, you would order the right gear ratios and oh, your differentials cool. for that. Yeah, nice. Um, it was a first year for the Ranger model, which is one of my favorite trucks. I would love to own a Ranger one day. Yeah, the, the Houndstooth interior. Um, trying to think of what else in the door panels and down the center of the seats. We've talked about that yeah. before. I've seen the. It's almost black and orange. It might be brown and orange houndstooth. And then I've got some black and blue houndstooth interior that's super cool. That's cool. I've also seen green. I don't know if that is like an uh, original or if that was like reproduction houndstooth, but I've seen green as well. Well, there were 12 or 13 different colors offered. So I'm sure there was, you know, especially yeah. in the late sixties, there was green. It's probably that's three cool. shades of green yeah, yeah, and three green interiors. That's cool. So, well, in 1969, I'm going to take this one. There were 20,956 Broncos produced. Um, and this is a, the one that is interesting to me. So in 69, they actually changed the, the embers on the front grill. So uh, 66 through 68, they were kind of recessed. And it had a little lip um, that held the ember in. And it was a white ember in an orange light. And then in 69, they pulled the um, ember out and put like this rubber backing mm -hmm. um, behind it, changed the light to just a plain white light, and then did an orange ember, uh, like orange uh, lens. lens. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I always, th that's always a, a key for me anytime I see the white ember or white lens uh i always know oh that's a you know 66 through 68 yeah. um and then uh 69 on they changed that um they uh um they switched to the weld in frames for the doors which we all hate because yeah. you can't take the the door frame off uh, anymore because it's welded in. There used to just be two screws where you could unscrew it. And I think you actually had to do one inside as well. But um, yeah, they, they made it hard to, to get the windows in and out of the, the door frames. Yeah, it used to be really easy because the, the, the glass is square and yeah. the window frame square. So you can't get it out. So if you take the frame out, then you can pull the vent glass out assembly right. with the one screw. Because uh, if you don't take the screw out, you can't get the vent glass out. Yeah. But they made it really hard when they welded those in. Ugh, so yeah. you take the the glass guides for the square glass, and you unscrew them, and you wiggle them around, and get them out of the way, and you drop the glass down, and then you got to wiggle the glass out of the way. Yeah. And then you can get the pull the felts out. You got to pull. Yeah, the felts out. like the amount yeah. of work it is to get. It's and then ridiculous. once that's out, then you start disassembling and you can rotate the vent out. But yeah, it's a lot more work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they also did uh, the electric synchronized wipers and, and that was an option instead of just the vacuum operated um, op uh, wipers. They did a parchment interior with the Wimbledon white matching on the dashboard, rims, roof, and bumpers. Um, and there were 13 color options on that one. Um, still, again, Dana 30, front axle, uh, Ford 9-inch. But, yeah, 69, pretty cool, pretty cool year. Well, guys, thank you so much for listening to uh, this episode of the Broncast. Uh, like we've said, definitely leave us a comment if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're listening on iTunes. We would love to have you leave us a review, um, hopefully a positive review. But uh, if you leave us a review, do me a favor. Do a little screenshot of it and shoot us an email at questions at the broadcast.com. We'll send you a little swag bag, some stickers, shirt, uh, something fun. Shoot us, a, shoot us over um, a little picture of that that uh review we would love to hear how we're doing and all that good stuff <laughs>